Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got Lauren LaRosa. She's a guest hosted with us this morning, formerly of TMZ. Yes, back again to have some fun. Right. All right, and let's get some front page news. Teslin Figaro. Good morning, Tez. Good morning, DJ Envy. Good morning, beautiful. That's to the brand, by the way. And good morning, Charlemagne. Thank you. I am beautiful, though. I am beautiful, too. <laughs> I appreciate the love. When I hear you say, good morning, beautiful, I accept it as me, too. Yes, correct. Good morning, you know? gorgeous. Good morning, <laughs> gorgeous. Goddamn lie. But let's jump right into it. Carly <laughs> Russell. Yeah, look like we you guys jumped into it a moment ago. So let's discuss further. Uh, 25-year-old Alabama nursing student Carly Russell, uh, who told police that she was abducted, admitted Monday through a statement from her lawyer that she was not kidnapped. A massive search for Russell began on July 13th after she called 911 and reported seeing a toddler on the side of the road. She returned home on July 15th and in a brief statement told Hoover police that she was not abducted. Now she admits that she was not kidnapped. Let's take a listen and talk about it on the other side. There was no kidnapping on Thursday, July 9th, 13th, 2023. My client did not see a baby on the side of the road. My client did not leave the Hoover area when she was identified as a missing person. My client did not have any help in this incident, but this was a single act done by herself. My client was not with anyone or any hotel with anyone from the time she was missing. My client apologizes for her actions to this community, the volunteers who were searching for her, to the Hoover Police Department and other agencies as well, as to her friends and family. Boy. Yeah, it's sad. Yeah. I mean, it, this is something that I think I noticed early on when I, when I seen her talking about the child, that no other person seen that child. It's sad, but now consequences, right? And now this is, this is the thing that I think we, we should discuss. Yes, mm -hmm. um, it was effed up what she did. It was effed up that she lied. But, and I hate to compare, but I've seen so many Karens that were, that called the police on on us for doing absolutely positively nothing, and nothing happens to them. And well, we could have got killed. We could have got shot. We could have got stabbed. We could have been choked out in a police chase, and nothing happens to them. So it's 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 difficult to say something should happen to her because we see it all the time. Well, there's, there's been precedent set. I mean, uh, there was a young woman in California. I can't remember her name right now, but I think she's currently doing. 18 months for faking a faking a kidnapping. This was a couple mm -hmm. years ago. So, I mean, there's, yeah. pre there's precedence for cases like this. And I mean, even if we look at the presidents with uh, Jesse Somet, obviously everybody's comparing that. You see all the memes on Twitter. And just to kind of refresh uh, what happened with him uh, when they found out that that was also a coast, uh, he faced six counts of disorderly conduct. He also uh, for falsifying a police report, you know, literally calling in a 911 that is against the law. Uh, so he had several uh, felonies with that. He also had to pay a fine for those resources that were used uh, to investigate that. He ended up having to pay one hundred and twenty thousand uh, dollars for restitution. Um, and so they're, they're definitely like Charlemagne. I think you have pointed out when we first talked about this story that uh, we do live in America. And you rest assured, you know, even though it may not be fair to uh, DJ Envy's point, uh, I can certainly sees she's going to get some type of charge at least at very very bare minimum a misdemeanor yeah, yeah. Oh, Sh sherry papini that was her name she was the california mother who faked her own kidnapping in 2016 and she it got sentenced to a year and a half and she's most definitely white yeah, yeah but, what, but what about the, the white lady that the guy you know the black brother was watching the birds in central park and she called the police and said that he did a crime you know what happened to her did she get any time for I, that I, or did I, that I, just I, slide I, you know i feel like apples and oranges am i am i tripping Lauren? I don't, still no, I, I see what point he's trying to get to. I just feel like we know the world we live in. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's just different for us. So we, like, I, I the comparison doesn't even matter because what's going to yeah, happen to her is going to happen. We mm -hmm. know the world we live in. And, like, it, it's annoying to see people saying, like, this is going to make people stop caring about black girls that no. go missing because they the care wasn't there in the first place. So this isn't going to change anything. That's you all I'd be mean? saying. So, and I, and it I, is, I, it's, it's embarrassing, though. I can say that. It's embarrassing. I can see why you feel that way. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not going to get caught up in Carly Russell as an individual. She lied. You know, this we all know. But like you just said, Lauren, the epidemic of missing black women and children in this country is very w real. So this story isn't going to stop me from continuing to amplify those other stories. And I still believe it was some kind of social engineering going on with this. Because why out of all the stories about missing black women and children, just yeah. our luck, <laughs> the one that's a lie is the one everybody latched on to and amplified? I think mm. it's because of all of the things that surrounded it. Like, it was kind of like a movie. There's, like, a kid on the side of the road, and 
the girl goes well, missing I mean, and she's on the phone and you hear a scream. It's like the internet loves that type of stuff. Mm. Yeah, that too. But just bottom line, you know, but I'm just going to be honest with you. And I, you know, I think I mentioned this to you before, Charlemagne. Yeah, it did sound movie like. But at the end of the day, um, when you are, we have to talk about classism um, within the black community. And her story got bumped up with a lot of us behind the scenes on the news side. And so when you have a story like her of saying, okay, great. A lot of people saw themselves as her, you know, a uh, college student, uh, you know, AKA uh, come from a well-to-do family, a middle-class family uh, that looked like, oh, that could be one of me, uh, one of uh, one of us. Yep. And so when I worked the uh, rape case for the Oklahoma City House Call for Rape Victims, the 13 black, vic uh, black women that were raped by a police officer, we did not get that support in the media. So I have to throw that in there as well, that when you have uh, journalists uh, who were mainstream media that said, you know, sent out, we all saw the posts, you know, that went out and said, hey, guys, I need you to stop what you're doing and I need you to pay attention to this. There were phone calls behind the scenes saying, let's bump this up, let's get this young lady home. And so they had a lot to do with it as well. And I appreciate the effort that they did, but I, I have to be uh, honest in saying that a lot of that had to do with uh, who you know and who you oh. know in this business and how people wrap their arms around this particular young lady. I totally agree with that, Tess. But, you know, she's not the first college student that sure. went missing. She's sure. not the first it won't sorority be the last member or fraternity member that went missing. Sure. I still, I still I'm find telling it. y'all, it's all the elements. And then the wig. The wig. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it was all of those things. It was all of those things at once. But, but I do want to say this before we get out of here. Uh, if you mm -hmm. did donate money to Crime Stoppers of Metro Alabama, uh, at first they said they were not giving the money back. Then they said they would. And now they're saying they will give you the money back if you uh, make a request. So if you did donate and you want to get your money back, you can do so. So ain't no refunds I on false claims? <laughs> <laughs> yes, they, they're they going to give it back. You just have to make the request. Oh, okay, 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 okay. And I would say, I, I think it also got high. I think if the submersible thing didn't happen, I don't think anybody would have spoke about this the way that it did because everybody was making a comparison. Like, you speak about them billionaire white folks, but you don't speak about yeah, our people. Right. Right. And I think, point, I think point, really class, that pushed though. as well. Yeah. But to Tether's point, that's class. And to me, that don't have mm -hmm. nothing to do with nothing either. And I feel like they handled this well from the jump. They were on it. They showed up five minutes after the phone call. What, what black person you know get police to show up five minutes after they call? Well, again, she comes from a well-to-do family. So, again, the community that came out, the white folks that came out, her neighbors that came out, she she had a lot of support based upon, you know, who was in her life. I mean, I'm just being honest. Working these cases with Attorney Crump, we see it all the time, where poor people do not, and I know your point, Charlemagne, we say it's not the only one, you know, this happens to, but I'm just speaking specifically on this case and the phone calls that were made behind the scenes and the people that galvanized to say, we need to make sure that somebody's paying attention to this. It, it had a lot to do with class and that's a real thing um in our community so well let's let's talk about it more uh, in a little bit get it off your chest thank you tez we'll see you in a little bit for the next front mm -hmm. page news 800-585-1051 if you need to vent or something's on your mind or you want to discuss this whatever it may be phone lines are open again 800-585-1051 it's the breakfast club good morning wake that ass up Early in the morning the breakfast club Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got our special guest host with us today, Lauren LaRosa, formerly of TMZ. And let's get in some front page news. Tez, what up, Tez? What up? I'm back again, DJ NV Lauren LaRosa. Your name <laughs> is Fly. I like how that rolls off your tongue. Thank you. I hated it forever until my adult life. Oh, really? Yeah, it's pretty Yeah, because it, it's Lauren LaRosa in. So it's like country. Lauren LaRosa Ann? Yes, Rosa is my grandmother, Ann is my aunt, and my mom just put low in front of Rosa. It was like a whole thing when I was a kid, but it's cute now. It's fly now. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> All right, well, let's jump right into it. Let's talk about Houston's oldest African-American cemetery. What's going on with that? Yeah, once again, uh, you know, we're always fighting for land and fighting for a uh, history for African-Americans. So I thought this was, story was interesting. Uh, the descendants of the oldest African-American cemetery in Olivewood in Houston, Texas, are fighting to stop a new development that they said could end up disturbing the unmarked graves of infants. I want you to take a listen to Miss Ma Margaret Williams, the founder and president of the descendants of Olivewood. And we'll talk about it on the other side. We have over probably 800 people who were born uh, during emancipation, when emancipation came here to Texas. Williams and her group have fought to preserve and clean up the land. She's heard stories that nearby land was the site of infant burials. We've been told that casket handles, um, uh, pieces of material, things that, that suggest that there may be burials there. Maximo Development owns the land and plans to turn it into a five-story soccer complex. 
I think about yeah. stuff like this all the time. I personally feel like, you know, we, we, we've all built on graveyards. If you just think about how long mm. the earth has been here and, you know, how long human existence has been, it's almost impossible that we aren't buried on top of at least one body, you know what I mean? In hospitals mm-hmm. where like people have died, yeah. like, a lot of a lot of like apartment complexes are like medical centers mm-hmm. and hospitals. Well, for clarity, uh, the cemetery is listed as one of the most endangered historical sites in the country, uh, so it is protected uh, as a historical cemetery. The dispute is over the additional land right outside the cemetery, so that's what they're trying to fight uh, to to make sure that that is also protected. Uh, Ms. Williams wants the developer to do a study to see if human remains are still present. And she also said in her statement that, you know, you guys can find another place to build, but the descendants cannot find another place, you know, for a resting uh, spot. So, and and as a side note, you know, when you said we've all built over something, I thought this was really interesting because I kind of went down a rabbit hole on this story. Uh, they've also, I said, well, if they build on top of these ancestors, just as an FYI, uh, they have found, if you believe in ghosts, <laughs> they said that they did uh, find ghosts in 1999 of Kathy Bunn, uh, who they said was a videotaped uh, hovering over a headstone, so I, I don't know. That. If you, Listen, you believe it? <laughs> yes, because because when you bring in, if you bring like a medium or a spirit guide in a room, you would be surprised mm-hmm. how many spirits are lingering around these mm-hmm. buildings that we just frequent Who do you think all is in the time. Here? I don't know. I've never brought anybody <laughs> in here. I need to bring uh Miss Kelly in here. I need to bring my aunt Kelly in here. And let her see if there's anything in here. You know what? But before we move on, I always wondered with so many people dying. Right. And in, in cemeteries in, in, in I guess it's weird places now, like you drive by Manhattan and then you see a cemetery in the middle of like 12th Street. I wonder w- what happens from there. Do they move? Do they pick up those bodies and move into a different cemetery, maybe in Long Island or upstate? Like Ain't what nobody, happens to that property? Just, you know, don't Ain't they just leave it? it? Th- th- why would you move it? Mm. There's going to come a point in time because we're not going to be here forever, guys. Y'all know no, that, right? I'm talking, about, like, I'm talking about us as a species. Like at some point, there's going to be some type of event that probably makes us extinct for the most part, right? All of these headstones and these bodies that are buried now, they just not gonna be there. They just gonna be underground. So when the next when the next generation of civilization comes, they gonna put a Starbucks over them graves too, because they not gonna know they was even there. You Jesus. think they're gonna do Starbucks? Or whatever they gonna it's be gonna drinking. It's gonna be flying then. something. It's not gonna be Starbucks. <laughs> it's gonna be like the Jetsons version of like, I don't know. Something. Cappuccino place. All right. Well let's discuss the IRS. The IRS is uh stopping something. Yeah, there's great news for those, uh, I guess, who owe the IRS mon- uh, money. Money. The IRS said Monday that it is ending its decade-old policy of making unannounced home and business visits in an effort to help workers stay safe and to combat scammers who pose as IRS agents. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Treasury Department said in a statement that effective immediate, immediately, uh, revenue agents will no longer make unplanned visits and they will send you a note uh, to your home to let you know to schedule a meeting. So good luck, I guess, with people responding back. Uh, to to have a meeting with the IRS. Uh, But they said they've done this because in recent years, they've experienced more threats due to the conspiracy theories uh, that are out there that are saying that, uh, you know, the IRS is coming after your money. They did a lot of this was politicized heavy after healthcare reform. Um, And so, you know, once healthcare reform kicked in and now you had to pay a fee, uh, there was a lot of chatter online about, hey, you know, the IRS is coming to get you. And so they've received a lot of threats. And so they said in order to protect everybody's safety, uh, that they would no longer uh, be popping up at folks' house. And again, scammers, you know, pre- preventing scammer- scammers as well. When they pop up, they like arrest you? What do they do? No. So like, they they no. usually discuss if you have a uh, if there's a problem or if you owe money or if they need to get some information from you. That's how, why they usually pop up. But I always thought that was dangerous because the IRS doesn't have a police car, right? Yeah. So when they pull up, they're pulling up in regular cars. And now some random person, some strange person in this day and age is coming to your door. They don't I'm have, not opening don't, my door. They don't have jackets on the back that say IRS? I have no clue, but I'm not opening that. my door. Well, and, and I don't like how Lauren asked that question to the room as if we would ever know. I, I pay my taxes, ma'am. I am yeah, a yes, tax-paying American I mean, I, citizen. I just paid some taxes last week, by the way. I pay them quarterly, okay? I would never know what the IRS does when they come to somebody's house. I'm just trying to figure it out, because why would you even come? Especially to somebody. I'm not opening my door for somebody I don't know. And I want to know how much money you got to owe them for them to say we got to pull up. <laughs> right. I don't. I don't think it's the amount. I think it's the fact that if you don't pay it or you don't answer their their uh, phone calls or letters, so it then they pull up amount. to see if you're there. Are we paying for them to come to people's houses? Are they paying? Well, like, do tax yeah, every, yeah, every, pay? Yeah, everything that I'm they sure, do yeah. is so paid by us. Yeah, oh, sure. there, there needs to be an amount then. 
Or they coming mm -hmm. to get their money. That's their money. Like, where my bread at? Hey, yo, what's happening? If I'm paying taxes yeah. for you to pull up on somebody for about five hundred dollars, that would really. That's why I said I, I need to know the amount. What is the amount yeah. that they pull up for? I know it ain't no five hundred dollars. Yeah, I doubt it's that. But I, I'm just interested to see how many people will respond back to the letter uh, and actually schedule an appointment. So you <laughs> better respond. Yeah, you, you don't play yeah, with you, them people. Don't play with Earth. Do not play yeah. with Earth. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alphabet boys. That's right. When Earth <laughs> say they want their money, Earth want their money. All right. We giving you a courtesy. We telling you we ain't gonna pull up on you, but we are gonna send you this letter. So pull up on us. <laughs> Alphabet boys, IRS. IRS. Oh my God. Yes. I never knew that. FBI. Well, we when we say yeah, the alphabet, yeah, alphabet yeah. FBI, okay, DEA, government, CIA, the IRS, yeah. MIB. Anything got to do with the alphabet? It's it, well, I guess the LGBTQ as well. Don't play with that group either. So, but yeah, anything got to do with the alphabet, you do not want to play a game with. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me say good morning to the IRS. I know they listen in the morning. Yeah, so I just want to say good morning. Good morning, IRS. Good morning to the IRS. And also, too, I don't think we can call the LGBTQIA Disney Plus community alphabet boys. That would not be all inclusive. That's true. You're correct. You Thank you, Charlamagne. I mean? Please yes. don't allow me to get canceled That's right, today. Taz. That's right, That's all. It's not the alphabet boys. It would be alphabet <laughs> People. Days. People. People. Days. 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 People. Days. Well, no, people. you don't yes. know how someone identifies. That's right. Alphabet people. That's right. That's correct. My apologies to the community. I did not mean to be insensitive. Uh, don't come. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that is front page news. Tez, we'll see you tomorrow. Peace. Hey, make sure, and make sure you subscribe to Tesla and Figaro's podcast, the Straight Shot No Chaser podcast on the Black Effect iHeartRadio podcast network and follow Tesla and Figaro on all social media platforms. At you getting old, Charlamagne. You keep forgetting this, that no, part. I, 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 I give it a beat. Yeah. I give it a beat. I was coming. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Whoa! Man, shut up. Whoa! It's too right. early. Y'all don't have a time that y'all start. <laughs> you see, Lauren, no. it's so early. It's never too early. It's never too early for these guys. Oh my right. gosh! Wake well, that ass up, literally. It's there always you go. six o'clock for envy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's open up the phone lines. Eight hundred five eight five one zero five one. Now, during the rumors, Lauren was discussing Young Miami, and people were saying that. Uh, she was a bad parent. That's because she brought her 10-year-old to Roll Aloud, something that she says she does all the time. That's a bonding moment for her. But during this time, uh, little Uzi bought strippers, and he was throwing singles. People are calling her a bad mom and saying that's bad parenting. Let's discuss. 800-585-1051. Was that bad parenting? We'll talk about it was when we come there? back. Was Diddy there? Because she might have been being a bad caretaker bringing that old man to Roll Aloud. Was that... Was <laughs> You stupid eye. We'll discuss when we come back. <laughs> it's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.